Niacinamide, a fun ingredient that the internet seems to love, but how does it actually work? And I wanted to share with you both my favorite and some of my least favorite products. And we do have two brands in here that are relatively controversial, Naturium and Purito. But before you get your panties in a bunch, let's talk about how niacinamide works, what it actually is. And I'm gonna explain from a product perspective why these are in here, just, just, Tell your huskies to calm themselves down. We'll get there eventually. We'll start off with not tossing products because apparently some people hate that, but what exactly is niacinamide? Niacinamide is vitamin B3 and B vitamins are actually water soluble, which is why you find these in a lot of different products. Sometimes like in this case, niacinamide is the key feature or the key ingredient on a product. And other times there are sunscreens and moisturizers and even toners that have niacinamide in it, but they don't label it smack dab on the front. Most people don't even know where niacinamide comes from. Niacin is again a B vitamin that we actually need in our bodies. We need to ingest it. But when it comes to niacinamide applied topically, nicotinic acid or niacinamide is what's used. Now, how does it actually help? Most people know that niacinamide is great for skin and that it generally works for all skin types, but what does it actually do? It does a myriad of things. And yes, it is great for oily skin, for dry skin, for a damaged skin barrier, and even for people who who have pigmentation. One of the coolest things about niacinamide is that it can help with oil regulation, production, and control. Specifically, it helps with creating ceramides. You've even heard of ceramides in your products. CeraVe, right? You've heard of all of these things and we know to put them on our skin, but did you know that your skin actually makes ceramides? Over half of the stratum corneum, which is the outer level of your epidermis, the top layer of skin, is made of ceramides. And if your skin doesn't have enough ceramides naturally, it can lead to dryness, it can lead to irritation, and it can actually damage your skin's barrier. Barrier. Niacinamide is great because it tells your skin, hey, we need to create more ceramides. So instead of just applying ceramides topically, you're literally using a vitamin that teaches your skin how to make more. Niacinamide is also great for pigmentation, specifically PIH, post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. If you ever get an acne lesion or a mark and it leaves behind kind of like this dark patch, maybe it's a little bit purple, brown, or even red, niacinamide can help. Niacinamide doesn't stop your skin from creating pigment. Pigment in our skin comes from melanocytes, the specific cells that make it. And that pigment is usually transferred over to keratinocytes, the regular keratin skin cells. However, niacinamide basically says, hey, melanin pigment color, do not go over there, stay over here. It keeps the melanin in one place and doesn't allow it to spread to those other cells. And therefore, it's really good for people who are struggling with a little bit of minor pigmentation and some of that post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation that, fun fun, can come along with acne and breakouts. There are also some medical studies showing that niacinamide acts as an antioxidant and can actually help with epidermal barrier function. Again, epidermal, epidermis, the top layer of skin, and barrier function our skin's natural barrier, mainly through that ceramide production. Some studies have also shown that there are anti-aging benefits. Basically, they put niacinamide on a bunch of different people, and those who were able to use it technically looked younger, or so they say. And when you combine niacinamide with other ingredients in a routine, specifically retinoids, the niacinamide can help with dryness, and kind of all those ingredients together are really a powerhouse. And note, can we call it graceful aging instead? Aging isn't a bad thing, it's a privilege. Which gets us into mixing. There are rumors out there that you shouldn't mix niacinamide and vitamin C. There are rumors about only using it during the day and not at night or what you can and can't put on your face at the same time. Let's break that down. Niacinamide is a very stable molecule. It is one of the most stable ingredients that we tend to use in skincare. And this is why you see it in a lot of different products. It can go with just about anything and it works for most people's skin, just about everyone. The rumor about not mixing vitamin C and niacinamide comes from an old and outdated study. They basically looked at super high amounts and pure amounts of L-ascorbic acid, which is vitamin C, as well as pure nicotinic acid or niacinamide. They put them together under high heat and high temperature and saw that there could be irritation. But that was done in a clinical setting and those sorts of settings would never happen in real life and definitely not on your skin. So unless you notice major irritation, there's no problem with putting a niacinamide on before vitamin C or vice versa. 
I wouldn't be worried about what you are or aren't mixing it with. I would personally be a little bit more worried about how the niacinamide balls up or feels chalky on the skin. You see, there are some niacinamide formulas that get a little bit crusty. One of mine that I actually do like on my skin tends to get a little bit crusty, and that is a perfectly normal occurrence. You just wanna make sure that that's not happening on your face or other products that you're using aren't making it worse. Speaking of products, when should you use these? It really depends on the products. You know, something like a cream is going to be different than something like a glowing serum. But niacinamide can be used during the day and during the night. I would personally recommend choosing one time a day because it doesn't cause any photosensitivity or light sensitivity. I would use it during the day and do something like a retinoid at night. But at the end of the day or the beginning, that is a choice that's up to you. Let's talk about some of my favorites and some of my least favorites, and we'll go from least favorite to most favorite and why. Please keep in mind, my skin is oily and acne prone. I've struggled with blemishes, breakouts, and scars my entire life. And I want something that's going to work for me, make my skin look good, but also help its health overall. So my needs might be different than yours, but let's start off with this one from Revolution Beauty. This is the 10% niacinamide and zinc that I originally compared to the Ordinary's niacinamide and zinc, which we'll talk about later. The Ordinary's is one of my favorite, and when I first started using this, I was pretty okay with it. I thought it was kind of comparable to the Ordinary's, but it wasn't a slam dunk match. But as I've really used it, especially over the past two years or so, it's a much more watery, kind of syrupy liquid, and I just don't find that it does much for my skin. It leaves it feeling a little bit greasy. I don't feel like it soaks in well, and I just haven't noticed great benefits benefits from it. Now keep in mind, this isn't just niacinamide, this is niacinamide and zinc. So for some people, this might dry them out because of that zinc, specifically zinc PCA. But if you have acne or blemish prone skin, niacinamide and zinc PCA could be one of your best friends. This one was inexpensive. I would semi recommend it, but it just wasn't my absolute favorite. And it's at the bottom of this list. Now, please don't hate me. I wanted to love this. This looks like a light bulb, but I promise you it is not. Don't try to illuminate the room, it won't work. But if you want to illuminate your face, it will. This is the Glow Recipe Watermelon Glow Niacinamide Dew Drops. These are basically a serum that kind of took the internet by storm. They have Glow Recipe's kind of classic ingredients put into a nice serum that's supposed to make your skin look and feel luscious. Uh, it smells like a watermelon jelly rancher. The branding, the packaging, the scent, 10 out of 10. But the way it actually works on my skin, I was not impressed with. And again, everyone's going to have a different need. My skincare is about self-care and I see things a little bit more medically. This to me almost felt like an under makeup primer or like makeup plus skincare. You pour it out, it almost looks like the watermelon moisturizer, but you'll notice it actually has the very slightest amount of dew and kind of shimmer to it. And when I put this on the skin, I don't feel like it absorbs super well it almost creates this little glossy sheen to my face. And I almost feel like it's a skincare liquid highlight. Definitely has some benefits, but it doesn't do for my skin what some of my favorite products do do. <laughs> Doo -doo. Sorry, I'm three and a half years old. But if you're looking for a hybrid of skincare and makeup, you are going to love this. But for me, it's not what I'm looking for. It doesn't layer very well underneath my other cosmetics. And I find that if I'm going to finish it up, I really just have to take a little bit, dab it onto my nose and like the highlights of my cheeks. Um, but that's pretty much the only way it works for me. So from a treatment perspective, it's not my favorite. But if you're someone who loves makeup, if you love cosmetics, if you love pretty little bottles to put on your vanity, and if you love watermelon Jolly Ranchers, then this is definitely going to be for you. Next on the list, we have Naturium. I got this at Target, do not hate me. I know there is a lot of drama when it comes to this brand, and there's also a lot of drama when it comes to Purito. Both of these brands I have updates on, and again, that is not what we're talking about here. We're leaving all of the brand details, all of the politics out of it, and I'm specifically talking about the formula. This niacinamide and zinc serum is a little bit higher. It's at 12% and I do like it. Paula's Choice is actually one of my least favorites. It's so much that I got rid of it. They had a 20% niacinamide booster and I just found that 20% was too much. That even brings us to a conversation around percentages. More doesn't always mean better. And specifically for niacinamide, more can actually mean chalkier. 
And that's kind of what I found with this serum. Now, that's why it's kind of in the middle for me because the benefits are good. The serum itself is pretty great. However, it does come off a touch chalky. The first couple times I used it, I was like, oh, it blends in so well. And then after I would wake up in the morning, I would realize that it was a little bit crustier than I would have liked and it kind of left a film on the skin. And it's not major, it's not bad. It's not like the glow recipe or the revolution one, but you can kind of get it to look chalky if you apply it too generously. I find that if I'm going to use this, I just have to use less. And if I actually want my niacinamide to work, I want to use more of it. But then the question becomes, well, because there's a higher percent, can you get away with using less of it? I don't know about that. Because this formula does have the zinc, it is definitely better for oily skin. This is one that I would recommend if you struggle with oil or with blemishes. But overall, the formula is halfway decent. And again, as long as you're not caking it on, it shouldn't cake up on you. Then we get to this little guy. Doesn't he look like an Oreo? or a tuxedo. Oh my God, it's a tuxedo penguin. It's a niacinamide penguin. That was a stretch. This one is from the Inky List and I love this one. The price is definitely right. But as you can see, mine is actually getting crusty on the sides of the bottle. Now that is because it is a gooier formula and unfortunately it has spilled a little bit and left out to dry. And I think this is actually kind of a cool science experiment so you can see how that can actually ball up. Now, the reason that this is right next to the Notorium one is because like the Notorium one, this one can get chalky on skin if you apply it in a layer that is too thick. I find that it is not as chalky as the Naturium one. And again, this one has the zinc, so it's more for oily skin. This I would recommend for all skin types, for combo skin types, or even for dry skin types. This one is fragrance-free and denatured alcohol-free. It technically has propendiol, but it has denatured alcohol-free, which some people don't like. And again, you know I don't hate fragrance, it's just not my favorite. But this one does come out a little bit gooier, and this one smooths on the skin so nicely. It does feel kind of like a hug for your epidermis. It goes on a little bit tacky, but I find this absorbs really well. And that's the reason that this is one of my favorites as compared to the other three is because of how it absorbs and the results that I've seen. This one specifically layers really well under cosmetics, specifically moisturizers, and I find that it works for my skin. Again, the only word of warning is don't go hard on layering this one because if you put globs of this one on your skin, it definitely will get a little bit cakey over time. So just start, make it simple. Then we've got my favorite to put on my pimples. This is the Ordinary's Niacinamide and Zinc. Now this is at 10% and 1%, so a little bit less than the Notorium, but I would still say that this one is for people who have oily skin. I've tried it on people who have dry skin. Some people like it, but it's not for everyone. This has been a tried and true. It is at a great price, and this does amazing things for my skin. This was one of the things that helped me with oil production the most. I definitely saw that it did help to regulate my oil production, including my skin ceramide production. And naturally, even though I have a lot of acne and like blemishes, I don't have a lot of PIH. So I wasn't really able to attest to the PIH and pigmentation on myself, but for other people, this stuff works so well. This honestly doesn't get gummy on me. There are some people who have said that they've purged from this, but it's not an exfoliator. So it sounds like maybe that's a potential reaction. But if you do have acne or oily prone skin and you have like $7, this is one of my absolute favorites. And for almost two years, I thought that this couldn't be beat for my skin personally. I thought this was it, top of the Christmas tree could never be replaced. But then this little guy snuck into my life. I went on one of my style Vana binges and this Purito just snuck its way into my cart, into a box, transversed the Pacific Ocean and ended up in my pores. And I am not mad that it did. Again, Purito does have some drama around them. Some people are not looking to support the brand. That choice is totally up to you. I think that they've handled their sunscreen situation quite well, but that's not what we're gonna talk about here because we have an entire video on it. So feel free to click that. But as far as the product goes, I love this one. And this one is actually essential oil free. Not all of Purito's products started out as essential oil free, but customers had feedback and the brand listened. And that's something I really love about them. This is the Deep Sea Pure Water Cream. And this is different because unlike all of these other ones, it's not just a serum, it's in an actual moisturizer. There are some other you know, products that have niacinamide and moisturizers like from Elta MD. But in my opinion, this one can't be beat. It has caprylic triglyceride, which is a amazing. It's found in many moisturizers. And this just feels like fluffy sea foam on your skin. It literally melts in and blends in so nicely. And it gives your skin this cushiony, sea foamy condolence as if it was being hydrated by the ocean waves themselves. 
The brand even states it's got deep hydration and nourishing marine ingredients. And so if the other niacinamide serums have dried you out or they haven't been right for your skin, this is definitely one that I would recommend trying. Niacinamide. <laughs> Yeah, I actually do put this on my little psoriasis flares. It wasn't until this year that I realized that like my younger brother, I am plagued with psoriasis and SIBO psoriasis. That sucks. But yeah, it works on my patchy parts. Love that for her. Have you tried any of these? Do you like them? And, and did you know all of these things about niacinamide, the mighty little molecule that does so much for your skin? If there's another ingredient you want a deep dive in recommendations on, then let me know. And I've actually listed all of these as well as a couple of others in the bottom tab. There's another video here that you don't want to miss. And while we're here, uh, make sure that you throw that like button a birthday party. It's not technically it's birthday, but it's almost it's half birthday. So put a party hat on it, celebrate. We have time. Nice. Always remember to stay hydrated, be beautiful both inside and out, and I cannot wait to see you in this next video. <laughs> Love you guys. Bye.